it's uh, April the 11th, 2024, and today I want to talk about the correlation between alcohol consumption and hypertension and or high blood pressure. Um, now there, there's a lot of uh, conflicting information on the internet. Um, you know, there's some information out there that says you know that uh, actual consumption of alcohol is actually good for cardiovascular health. Um, and but there's a lot of information that says the other and from what I've gathered uh, you know there used to be this idea that uh, you know small amounts of red wine um, you know are really good for cardiovascular health um, but looking at the data now that's on the internet or you know just just doing a search uh, come to find out from what the scientists are saying now is that the uh, the risk factors with the alcohol don't outweigh uh, the benefits that come along with, uh, you know, consumption of red wine, which has always been the, uh, you know, the one substance that they said, you know, could um, actually help with cardiovascular health. Um, so, with that said, uh, you know, there, there, there is a lot of information out there. Um, there are some studies that have been done uh, that went on for quite some time. Um, there's actually one study that I was looking at where they uh, they did a study of about 20,000 people for about 30 years and uh, found out that it actually did um, raise blood pressure in those individuals that uh, continued to drink. Um, I'll just go ahead before we start today's video and just kind of uh, lead into this and just kind of tell you a little bit about something that happened with me. Um, I think I've talked about this in a video in the past, but uh, I had, I, my old dentist uh, years ago um, ended up passing away, and um, I was in the process of looking for a new dentist. Uh, right before my, my old dentist had passed away, he, um, he had found a cavity, and I needed to get it taken care of. And uh, of course, I couldn't go back to him to have it done because uh, he's no longer with us, so um, I was trying to find a new dentist, and um, I was in the process of trying to find one, but I needed to get that cavity taken care of. So I ended up going to one of those corporate uh, dentist office to, to get the cavity taken care of. And when I went into the dentist office, um, one of the things that I found that was, that was really odd was the first thing they asked me to do was, uh, was to pay up front. And I had never done that before, and I was like, okay, sure, I guess that's how you guys do it here. Um, now I remember it was like 390 bucks or something like that that I had to pay out of pocket. Um, I went ahead and uh, paid them and then they took me to the back, sat me down in the chair and uh, one of the first things they did, which is another thing that I found that was odd, uh, was they took my blood pressure. And I never had my blood pressure checked to have any cavities filled or any kind of dental work done. Just It never happened before. Um, when I sat down in the chair, they took my blood pressure, and the first thing that the lady did was she said, uh, we're not going to be able to do this procedure on you today. And I was like, why? What's going on? Um, she said, your blood pressure is through the roof, and you are at, at risk for a stroke. I'm sorry, guys. i got like gnats or something flying around me today. Um, but she said, you're at really high risk for a stroke right now, and uh, you actually need to go ahead and go to the emergency room right now and uh, she said, we're gonna go ahead and refund your money. And I was like, you know, really confused. I got up and I was like, all right, sure. And so they gave me my money back and I remember exactly what I was doing that day. I was actually, uh, it was eight o'clock in the morning when my appointment was, this was about 10 years ago or so. Um, my appointment was at uh, eight o'clock in the morning and I was out of there by like 8.15. And, uh, you know, like I said, they told me to go to the emergency room, but I was like, I'm not going to the emergency room. I'm going to the mountains. I was, uh, I'd already made plans to go camping in the mountains, to go kayaking that day. And I was actually going up there for a few days. <clears throat> so instead of going to the hospital, I just went up to the mountains and kayaked. And um, I finally got another dentist and got that taken care of. And that dentist didn't take my blood pressure when I went there and, you know, I had things taken care of after that and without any problems. Um, <clears throat> but I should have done something about that then. And I should have known at that point 
you know, that, that there was something seriously going on there. And uh, it was directly uh, related to my alcohol consumption. Now, at the same time, I did smoke cigarettes uh, during that period of time as well, which I'm sure helped contribute to the fact that I had high blood pressure. But also the fact that I was a very heavy drinker at the time as well um, absolutely played a fact in, you know, in, in the point that I had a high blood pressure. Now, um, also, I did eat a lot of salt back then. Um, you know, my diet was not very healthy at all. Um, I don't eat very much salt now at all, B barely any. Um, <clears throat> but then when I did eat, uh, you know, I would shake salt on my food before I'd even taste it. Um, you know, and one of the reasons I would do that is because I wanted to have salty food so I could drink more. Um, but at the same time, uh, you know, I had, uh, there's a lot of hypertension in my family. Um, I've got a lot of family members have hypertension. And I should have known, um, like I said, at that point that, you know, something's going on. And I had never had any problems with high blood pressure uh, up until that point. Um, and I know it was uh, directly correlated to my alcohol consumption and the fact that I smoked. And like I said as well, I, I consumed a lot of sodium during that period of time, which didn't help. Um, but... Uh, I should have done something about it and you know from what I've the research that I've done um, you know the, it, it points towards the fact that alcohol consumption does lead to high blood pressure um, now since I've removed the alcohol from my life and I'm, I'm, I'm almost on two years sober right now uh, next month on the 16th of May uh, will be two years for me um, and ever since I have removed the alcohol from my life um, my blood pressure actually now uh, is so low that they get concerned about how low my blood pressure is. Now I am on beta blockers as well. Um, you know, I got to be completely honest with you guys. And the reason is, is because um, I have portal hypertension. Um, I had blood clots in my portal vein uh, and in my splenic vein. And, um, you know, the portal hypertension uh, can lead to those varices and can lead to the varices bursting as well. So, you know, they really want to keep that uh, the blood pressure in my portal vein down as low as possible. Uh, so I do, I do take beta blockers daily and I take them at night because they make me really tired. I, I've tried taking them during the day before and it just makes me just exhausted. So I take them before bed at nighttime and I usually, you know, I wake up in the morning and I don't feel so tired. If I take them in the morning, it just completely uh, makes me feel like, you know, I just want to sleep all day. Um, but with that said, uh, you know, now my blood pressure is really low. And um, I'm sh sure that that has to do with the fact that I don't drink anymore. Um, so let's, today, let's just go ahead and lead into, well, what is high blood pressure? So normal blood pressure is um, 120 over 80 or lower. Uh, your blood pressure is considered high, stage 1, if it reads 130 over 80. Stage 2 uh, high blood pressure is 140 over 90 or higher. And if you get a blood pressure reading of 180 over 110 or higher, more than once a week, seek medical treatment right away. So if you're having the, those kinds of blood pressures, um, definitely please go see a physician um, because it can lead to serious, serious problems if you don't. Um, so let's talk about <clears throat> high blood pressure and alcohol. Um, so... <clears throat> there is a study that went on, and uh, it went on for quite some time. It was uh, an analysis of data from seven studies involving more than 19,000 adults in the United States, Korea, and Japan found a clear association between increases in the systolic top number of uh, blood pressure and the number of alcoholic beverages consumed daily. Even people who drank one alcoholic beverage per day showed a link to higher blood pressure when compared to non-drinkers, reinforcing the American Heart Association, Association's advice to limit alcohol intake and to not start drinking alcohol if you do not already. Um, even in adults without hypertension, blood pressure readings may climb more steeply over the years as the number of daily alcoholic drinks rise. According to an analysis of seven international research studies published today, in hypertension, an American Heart Association journal. 
With a statistical power of seven international research studies, this analysis confirms for the first time that there is a continuous increase in blood pressure measures in both participants with low and high alcohol intake. Even low levels of alcohol consumption were associated with detectable increases in blood pressure levels that may lead to a higher risk of cardiovascular events. We found no beneficial effects in adults who drank a low level of alcohol compared to those who do not drink alcohol, said senior study author Marco Vincetti, a professor of epidemiology and public health in the Medical School of University of Modena in Reggio Emilia University in Italy, and an adjunct professor in the Department of Epidemiology at Boston University School of Public Health, we were somewhat surprised to see the cons that consuming an already low level of alcohol was also linked to higher blood pressure changes over time compared to no consumption, although far less than the blood pressure increases seen in many heavy drinkers. Our analysis was based on grams of alcohol consumed and not just the number of drinks to avoid the bias that might arise from the different amount of alcohol contained in standard drinks across countries and other types of beverages, says study co-author Tom Tommaso. An associate professor of epidemiology and public health in medical school of the University of Modena in Italy, an affiliate researcher at the University of California Berkeley School of Public Health, Researchers reviewed the health data for all participants across the seven studies for more than five years and compared adults who drank alcohol regularly with non-drinkers and found systolic top number blood pressure rose 1.25 millimeters of mercury in people who consumed an average of 12 grams of alcohol per day, rising to 4.9 uh, mmHg in people consuming an average of... Um, 48 grams of alcohol per day in the U.S., 12 ounces of regular beer, 5 ounces of wine, or 1.5 ounce shot of distilled spirits contains about 14 grams of alcohol. Usual alcohol content differs in alcohol available in other countries. Dis uh, diastolic bottom lumber, number blood pressure rose 1.14 uh, millimeter. Uh, millimeters uh, Hg in people consuming an average of 12 grams of alcohol per day, rising to 3.1 mm Hg in people consuming an average of 48 grams of alcohol per day. These associations were seen in males, but not in females. Diastolic blood pressure measures the force against artery walls between heartbeats and is not as strong a predictor of heart disease risk in comparison to systolic. Alcohol is certainly not the sole driver of increase in blood pressure. However, our findings confirm it contributes in a meaningful way. Limiting alcohol intake is advised and avoiding it is even better. <clears throat> Although none of the participants had high blood pressure when they enrolled in the studies, their blood pressure measurements at the beginning did have an impact on the alcohol findings. We found participants with higher starting blood pressure readings had a stronger link between alcohol intake and blood pressure changes over time. This suggests that people with a trend towards increased, although still not high, blood pressure may benefit the most from low to no alcohol consumption. <clears throat> uh, if you don't drink already, don't start. If you do drink, talk to your doctor about the benefits and risk of consuming alcohol in moderation. The association also does not recommend drinking any form of alcohol to gain potential health benefits. Um, instead, follow the association's lifestyle and health metrics for optimal cardiovascular health called Life's Essentials. Life Essential 8. Eating healthy food, be physically active, don't smoke, get enough sleep, maintaining healthy weight, and control cholesterol, blood sugar, and blood pressure levels. Um, so the systolic blood pressure, the top number in a blood pressure reading, measures the force against the artery walls when the heart contracts. It rises steadily with age and is a strong predictor of cardiovascular disease risk. Effective blood pressure management is vital to reduce, prevent, or delay development of high blood pressure. So, that's basically talking about, you know, what high blood pressure is, the study that they did, um, and all that good stuff. So, now let's talk about why alcohol right, raises So, now let's talk about why uh, alcohol can raise your blood pressure. 
Excessive alcohol consumption has been linked to high blood pressure known as hypertension. Regular and heavy drinking can lead to an increase in blood pressure levels over time. Alcohol acts as a vasodilator, meaning it relaxes the blood vessels and widens them. This expansion of blood vessels can cause an increase in blood flow and subsequent elevation in blood pressure. Additionally, alcohol consumption can stimulate the release of a stress hormone such as adrenaline, which can further elevate blood pressure. And I also saw that um, alcohol increases cortisol in our, uh, in our bodies as well, which can increase our blood pressure too. Um, can alcohol cause low blood pressure? While alcohol is commonly associated with high blood pressure, it can also have the opposite effect and cause low blood pressure, also known as hypotension. Alcohol acts as a depressant on the central nervous system and it can slow down heart rate and blood pressure. In some cases, excessive alcohol consumption can lead to a sudden drop in blood pressure, resulting in dizziness, fainting, and even shock. How much alcohol is needed to affect your blood pressure? The amount of alcohol required to affect uh, blood pressure can vary from person to person. Factors such as age, overall health, genetics, and individual tolerance levels all play a role. However, it is important to note that even moderate alcohol consumption can have an impact on blood pressure. <clears throat> the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, recommends that men should limit their alcohol intake to no more than two standard drinks per day, while women should limit it to one standard drink per day. A, stu a study found that for low doses of alcohol, we found that one glass of alcohol had little or no effect on blood pressure and increased heart rate within six hours of drinking. We are moderate release Moderate, moderately certain that medium dose alcohol decreased blood pressure and increased heart rate within six hours of consumption. We did not see any significant change in blood pressure heart rate after that, but the evidence was limited. We are also moderately certain that high dose alcohol decreased blood pressure within six hours and the effects lasted up to 12 hours. After that, blood pressure was found to be increased. Heart rate increased significantly after alcohol consumption remained increased at all times measured. Thus, alcohol decreases blood pressure initially, initially up to 12 hours after ingestion and then increases blood pressure after that. Alcohol consistently increased, uh, increases heart rate at all times within 24 hours of consumption. So who is at most risk from alcohol affecting their blood pressure? Certain individuals may, may be more susceptible to the effects of alcohol on blood pressure. Those who have a history of high blood pressure uh, are already taking medication to manage hypertension or have underlying health conditions such should be particularly cautious. Additionally, people who engage in heavy drinking or binge drinking are at a higher risk of experiencing adverse effects on their blood pressure. So, what are the signs of alcohol affecting your blood pressure? Headaches. Something I used to deal with all the time. Frequent or persistent headaches, particularly after alcohol consumption, may be an indication of high blood pressure. Another one, dizziness or lightheadedness. Feeling dizzy or lightheaded can be a sign of both high and low blood pressure. Flushed or red face, something I've talked about I used to deal with all the time. My face used to be red all the time. Alcohol can cause the blood vessels in your face to dilate, resulting in a flushed appearance. Fatigue or weakness, another thing. Changes in blood pressure can lead to feelings of fatigue or weakness. Rapid heartbeat. Alcohol consumption can temporarily increase heart rate, which may be noticeable. Um, so if you're experiencing any of these problems, please go see a physician and get that checked out because it can be very, very uh, uh, important. It can really cause serious health problems, um, especially if you have long, uh, high blood pressure for long periods of time. Um, but, you know, basically what they're saying here uh, from, from all the stuff I've seen is that, um, you know, there, any small amount of alcohol really is not good for you at all. And that removing the alcohol totally can really be beneficial uh, to lowering your blood pressure as a whole. So, <clears throat> it's, you know, another reason why. Uh, you know, drinking is just not a good idea. It causes so many problems. It's not just our liver. It's not just our pancreas. Um, you know, it causes problems with our blood pressure, uh, gout, um, which I was going to do, uh, my video today was actually going to be on gout. 
Um, but one of the subscribers um, actually reached out to me uh, and was asking about high blood pressure and the correlation between that and alcohol. And uh, I said, I'll go ahead and do this video today. I'm actually going to do a video tomorrow on gout and how uh, alcohol and gout correlate between, uh, with each other. And, um, you know, once again, it just causes so many health problems. Um, you know, one of the things, uh, high blood pressure, if you have a very long period of time, it can cause a stroke. You do not want to have a stroke. Uh, you know, so many problems can happen after that. Uh, you know, you can lose uh, functionality of you know, half of your face. Um, I've known people, you know, that have had strokes. Uh, they couldn't talk after that. Um, you know, it's just, it's, it's just not good uh, stuff that comes with it. Um, but, you know, like I said, uh, you know, there's, there's been this idea uh, that drinking red wine is good for cardiovascular health, but from what they're saying, um, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it, it can cause a lot of problems. Um, a, another thing that can happen too, uh, that can cause high blood pressure is because alcohol can cause sleep apnea. And sleep apnea um, can uh, cause uh, high blood pressure as well. Um, so, what, what can happen with high blood pressure? So high blood pressure, also known as hypertension, is called the silent killer because it often comes with no symptoms. Can wreak havoc on the body, causing damage to the blood vessels, heart, brain, kidneys, eyes, and more. If left undetected or uncontrolled, it can lead to heart attack, stroke, heart failure, kidney failure, kidney disease, vision loss, sexual dysfunction, and angina and peripheral arter artery disease. <clears throat> it is estimated that nearly half of U.S. adults um, have high blood pressure. Only one in four adults with hypertension have control over it. So 50% of our total population has high blood pressure and only one or 25% of those have control over their high blood pressure. That is so scary uh, to think about. And like I said, sleep apnea um, and that's another thing that I used to have. People used to, when I would like go camping with someone or whatever, when I used to drink, uh, I remember one time I went camping with my dad and we stayed at this, uh, at this resort up on the Chattooga River. And I woke up about three o'clock in the morning. All the lights were on in the room. I didn't know where he was. Uh, I was so confused. I woke up and started looking all around. I couldn't find him. I went looking all around the place, couldn't find him anywhere. I finally went out to his Jeep and found him asleep in the Jeep. And when I knocked on the window and asked him what was going on, he said, I couldn't sleep in there with you. He said, you were snoring so loud that I had to get up and come out here and sleep. I used to have sleep apnea so bad. Um, I should have been on a CPAP machine, uh, but you know, I didn't want to do anything about it because I didn't want anybody to tell me that I had to stop drinking. Um, when a person with sleep apnea stops breathing, the brain steps in and wakens the body up to take a breath. This can happen up to 30 times an hour. And when we don't get good quality sleep, and particularly if we're not getting good quality sleep because of our airway gets closed, and our brain and our body have to maintain enough awareness to try to open up the airway, that is very, very hard on our vascular system. All, these, all the stress and strain drives up blood pressure, and not just when we're asleep, but also when we're awake for the rest of the day. <clears throat> so a common warning sign of sleep apnea is snoring. So if someone tells you that you snore loudly or gasp during, during sleep, which I used to <sighs> like that when I would sleep at night, um, uh, that probably means that you do. And it may warrant a discussion with your health care provider. Uh, an unpredictable sleep schedule uh, because of drinking um, and sleep apnea can cause high blood pressure. Um, says here holding it when you have to go when you have a full bladder but wait to urinate to your next uh, rest or commercial break your body increases your blood pressure a full bladder raises blood pressure about 10 to 15 points um, and what's one of the things that happens when we drink uh, you urinate all the time and especially if you're sleeping uh, you know you lay there and there's but I remember so many nights I would wake up and I had to pee so bad and I would just lay there because I didn't want to get up um, 
So here's something talking about alcohol. Although it's often repeated that wine is good for heart, for the heart, alcohol can send blood pressure soaring, both in the short and long term. Uh, that, while alcohol initially relaxes the blood vessels, those vessels start to constrict once the liver metabolizes it. Blood pressure can remain at higher than normal levels the day after imbibing. And, and if drinking too much becomes a pattern, so will higher blood pressure numbers. Heavy drinkers with more than three drinks a day for women, four for men, who cut back to moderate drinking up to one drink a day for women and two for men can lower the top number in their blood pressure reading by 5.5 mm um, or millimeters of mercury measurement for pressure and their bottom number by about 4 mm HG according to the Mayo Clinic. And uh, also uh, sugar. Um, when we eat sugar, our bodies release insulin to help clear the sugar from the blood and get it to the cells where it can be used for energy. But insulin itself tends to drive up blood pressure in many people. So if you're eating a lot of added sugar or simple starches, you're having these more intense and longer bursts of insulin, which could raise blood sugar. And uh, what is in alcohol? The sugar. Uh, so, you know, especially when you're mixing, um, you know, you're mixing a hard drink with Coke or something like that, you get more sugar, which is creating, you know, your, your pancreas producing more insulin, which can lead to high blood pressure as well. Another one of them as well is smoking. And what comes along with drinking? Smoking cigarettes, smoking tobacco. Um, you know, ever since I quit drinking, I don't really ever, I've never really even thought about uh, smoking since. Uh, and the thing is, is that uh, yet another reason to kick the habit, smoking, a proven risk factor for a heart attack and stroke can also mess with your blood pressure. Um, so, uh, it says nicotine, nicotine is to blame. It causes the blood vessels to narrow and the heart to beat faster, which makes your blood pressure get higher. Uh, so, you know, w once again, just alcohol uh, definitely can raise your blood pressure. Um, if you are experiencing any of these things, please go speak with a doctor. If you're getting those headaches, and you know what I'm talking about if you are, especially the next day after you had a really big bender the night before, um, that's when those headaches used to really set in. And I know that it wasn't just the alcohol, because I would feel that like pulsing, the pumping of my heart. Uh, I could feel it, and every time that would pump like that, I would get these like really bad headaches. And um, my blood pressure was always through the roof. And like I said, ever since I removed the alcohol, my blood pressure has been completely fine now. So, um, just another, another reason why to remove alcohol from your life. It causes so many problems to our body. Um, just the benefits don't, they, 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 they do not outweigh the risk. Um, yeah, it might help you relax for a little bit. But all the things that come along with it, it's just not worth it. I mean, just our mental health, our cardiovascular health, our liver health, our pancreas health, our stomach health, our GI health. Our skin looks better when we stop drinking. I mean, just everything. My face used to be, and I'm not kidding, as red as this right here. Every single day, my face was that red. It was always red. People used to make fun of me because my face was so red. I, when I would get angry, my face would turn purple because I would be so red in the face. And I'm lucky I'm still here right now. I, I probably should have had a heart attack or a stroke at some point, and I didn't. And I'm very lucky. So, like I said, this is just another reason why removing alcohol from your life can just make your life so much better. We can live such a such more such more a healthier life, um, and. It, you know, when you're healthier, uh, you can enjoy your life more. And, you know, being healthy as well, uh, it's going to help reduce the depression because you don't feel so bad. You're going to be able to go out and do more things. You're just going to feel better in general. And, you know, if your blood pressure's high, you're going to feel like garbage. Uh, you're going to have headaches. You're just going to feel like trash. And if you can get your blood pressure back down, you can get your body feeling better, your liver's working better, your pancreas is working better you're gonna feel better in general, which is gonna make you mentally feel better, and just overall, your life is gonna be better. You're gonna be more productive, uh, you're gonna get more done during the day, and life's just gonna have so much more meaning uh, without having that in your life, so. 
With that said, guys, that's it for today. I'm going to go ahead and hop off of here. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Um, I do want to just remind everybody that the live video is going to be again on Saturday. That'll be at 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Um, like I said the other day, I'm going to be doing the lives every Saturday from here on out at 12 o'clock. <clears throat> I might change it if something's going on, you know, and I, I can't do it right at 12. But I plan on doing a live video every single Saturday. Uh, it's a great opportunity for everybody to hop in, ask me questions in real time. Last, the last one we had was just a blast. Everybody was in there just chatting away. People started getting into conversations with each other. It was just really, really cool. And we had people from all over the world that came in and joined in that day. The attendance was huge. It was just a blast. It was a really good time. And I'd love to see you guys there. If you can't make it, I totally understand. But for those of you who can, just hop in. You don't have to stick around the whole entire time. Now, we probably will do it for about an hour or two. Uh, the last time was two hours. The time before that was two hours as well. And, you know, it just, I'm just going to do it for as long as it's organically possible. If, you know, as long as everybody's still there and we're talking, I'm going to keep going. Um, if it dies off and we're down to 10 people in the chat room, well, then I'm just going to go ahead and say, okay, guys, we're going to end it for the day. But I'll at least go for an hour and give everybody an opportunity to hop in. Um, and then on Sunday, we're going to be bringing my wife back on again that day. And um, we do have the questions uh, from Sunday's video that we're going to be answering on Sunday. My wife will not be in the video, but she will be sitting right beside me and talking. Um, there were some really, really good questions in Sunday's video. If you do have any questions you'd like to see answered, please go back to that video from last Sunday and add it to the comments section. That way, it's all in one place and I can find them very easy. Because uh, if you start putting questions in all these different videos, I might have a really difficult time trying to get them. Um, that just makes it real easy for us to go right there to that video, to the comment section, and we can look and see if there's any questions that we missed and we can pull those back up. So, with that said, guys, hope to see you there on Saturday, and I'm looking forward to that video on Sunday. I hope you guys are too. And with that said, guys, I will see you in tomorrow's video. Bye-bye.